today's lab, we are going to examine organic molecules. Be sure when you're coming to lab to have your closed-toed shoes on so that we abide by the safety rules. In looking at organic molecules, remember information from the textbook that you've read. Living organisms are made up of macromolecules. Macromolecules are also referred to as polymers. These polymer units are what we commonly call carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Nucleic acids are the fourth category, but we're not examining those in this lab. Carbohydrates, as a polymer, are made up of the monomer unit that's called a monosaccharide. You can combine monosaccharides, mono means one, so if we link several monosaccharides together, we will create a polysaccharide. A polysaccharide, poly means many, is a very, very large molecule, which is why we use macromolecule as a synonym. An example of a common polysaccharide is starch. Proteins are the second category of polymers or macromolecule. The monomer unit that repeats itself is referred to as an amino acid. And the protein unit or the macromolecule unit itself is also referred to as a polypeptide. Poly indicating many amino acids linked together to make the large macromolecule. Polypeptides uh, are large molecules that we are familiar with in your muscle tissue, in enzymes. These are large molecules. The third category is lipid. Lipid is made up of many lipids. It's a diverse category. Many lipids have a monomer unit referred to as fatty acid. Fatty acids are bonded to a um, glycerol molecule. In many of our cell membranes, we need uh, phospholipids and other common um, lipids are found throughout your body. All lipids do not have a monomer unit of a fatty acid. And today, also, we're not going to examine lipids in this laboratory, but we wanted you to be familiar with this is a third category. It's incredibly important to living organisms. In studying organic molecules, one of the techniques that's used is a colorimetric analysis. That's what we're going to use in the, our lab today. A colorimetric analysis, simply you see the root word of color, is we're going to analyze and watch for color changes from one color to another. The reagents that we're going to use, and a reagent is simply a chemical term for a solution. These reagents have specific compounds in them that will allow them to react with functional groups within the molecular structure of the particular polymer or monomer unit that we're examining. We learned about functional groups in lecture, the hydroxides, the carbonyls, those functional groups are going to allow these molecules to behave as you're going to see in this colorimetric laboratory today. So experiment one, we're going to test for reducing sugars. And reducing sugars is a synonym for all your monosaccharides, such as glucose, fructose, galactose, and some disaccharides. Disaccharide is two monosaccharides bound together. Not all disaccharides are reducing sugars, just some. What is a reducing sugar? A reducing sugar is simply that functional group that's going to donate an electron. The reagent that we'll use for this experiment is called Benedict's reagent, or Benedict's solution. Benedict's is the man that came up with this combination of chemicals to allow this color change. A positive test, which is what we'll be testing for, involves a color change from light blue to an orange, a green, possibly red, and some yellow after it's heated. To do this analysis, you will use your safety goggles. 
in all cases with chemicals involved. So we'll put on our safety glasses and every table has a basket and you will have all the equipment that you need to carry out these instructions on your individual tables. You will find a test tube rack and in the test tube rack, an example of how you would do test tube one is one of your test tubes is going to contain deionized water and the other one you're going to use milliliters of various solutions. We have glucose, fructose, sucrose, potato juice, starch solution, egg, white solution which is albumin and milk. You will have eight test tubes that you will fill with two milliliters of each solution. The water of course is your control. All experiments need a control. This is our comparing tube. Everything we will compare back to water to see if there's a color change. Benedict's reagent is in a uh, dropping bottle on your tables. You require at least 20 drops of solution to be placed in each tube. In the laboratory, we try not to ever shake tubes as it can be dangerous. The safest way is to grasp the mouth of the test tube using two of your fingers on the opposite hand. If you will tap the bottom of the tube, it will mix the chemicals thoroughly. So be sure to tap all of your tubes. You, if you have different layers, you'll see that they get mixed. Once you have your tubes mixed, you, you can use a test tube holder, and the test tube holder is a clam that you squeeze and you'll pick up your test tubes, and you will set all eight of your test tubes in the heated water on the hot plate. In one minute, you will see that the solutions have changed color. You will remove the tubes from the water bath, Comparing the tubes to the control, you will see that the color change is obvious. This is one positive test that can result using Benedict's test. Experiment two that you're going to, to carry out today is testing for the presence of starch. Starch, remember, is a polysaccharide. Many monomer units, many monosaccharides bound together. The reagent that you will use is Lugol solution, or it could be referred to as iodide, potassium iodine. A positive test for this analysis will be an amber, yellow, red color to a blue black. It will look like, the initial color looks like a sweet tea. To do this test, you will again put two milliliters of solutions in your test tubes. No heat is required for this analysis. After you have your test tubes labeled with the appropriate solution, you will, you will pull the iodide, potassium iodine solution, or Lugol's from your basket and place the 20 drops, or five, you only need five drops for the solution, into each test tube. Again, mixing the test tubes thoroughly, using water as our control, this is an instant readout of results. Your control is water, there's your sweet tea color, and the blue-black is your positive results from Lugol's analysis.
Experiment 3 involves testing for the presence of proteins. Remember, proteins are the macromolecule in the polymer unit that's made from the individual monomer units known as amino acids. We link hundreds of amino acids together to form these large protein molecules. The monomer unit is the amino acid. When you link amino acids together through dehydration synthesis, the carboxyl group from one amino acid bonds with the amino group of a second amino acid. This very special bond is created through these two functional groups when the OH group and an H group from the nitrogen, from the amine group, form water, dehydration synthesis. This bond formed between the carboxyl and the amine group of two separate amino acid is known as a peptide bond. The only compounds in the world with peptide bonds are proteins. Highly specialized bond. The reagent that we're going to use in this analysis is biuret solution. Biuret is the French man who combined these chemicals to give us a colorimetric analysis for protein. A positive test will be a blue solution turning to a purple or lavender color if the peptide bond is present. Peptide bonds are formed between two amino acids. A single amino acid does not contain a peptide bond. So to do this analysis, again, we will label our test tubes. We will put our solutions, our two milliliters of solution, in each test tube. We will obtain our biuret solution from our basket. It also is a blue solution like Benedict, so be sure to look at the label. Shake the biuret solution and add your 20 drops of solution to each tube. A control is always used so that we have that for comparison and reference back to what a non-positive test looks like. We mix each test tube thoroughly and again when you compare each test solution to the control, you can see the color change is obvious. Record your results in the tables given in your lab book and be sure to return all of your solutions to your baskets. Clean up all the test tubes. Use the brushes available at the sink and invert your test tubes so that they're draining for the next class and be sure your instructor has approved your tabletop is ready for the next class. Return all your safety goggles to the basket and thank you for participating and remember to complete the worksheet associated with this lab on Blackboard and bring it with you to enter lab.